What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be doing a teardown and inspection of a two liter turbo engine that experienced catastrophic engine failure. This two liter turbo engine is out of a 2017 GTI with roughly 40,000 miles on it. The car had full stage two modifications. Typically when we talk about stage two modifications, we're talking about software, we're talking about a downpipe, probably an intake, probably a turbo inlet pipe, and possibly a charge cooler. I'm not 100% sure of the exact modifications on this car, but I do know that it had stage two software on it. The owner of the vehicle was doing some spirited driving and went from third gear to second gear instead of third gear to fourth gear. And what do you call it when you go from third gear to second gear at a high RPM? We call that the money shift. That led to severe engine damage. The engine was actually replaced in the vehicle. So we got this one to do a full teardown and see the damage. There is a good possibility that this engine may get rebuilt as a full performance engine build. So while disassembling, we're gonna stay crazy organized to make sure that if it does get rebuilt, it's nice and easy for whoever rebuilds it. Let's go ahead and start on the top side with some of the nice and easy stuff coming off this engine. This is our N80 valve and our bracket. And in order to stay super organized, I'm actually gonna take a lot of these bolts and just put them right back where they came from. We'll also go ahead and pull our ignition coils out. We'll even go ahead and label these. While we're here, I wanna pull a spark plug out and see if there's any damage to those. Well, it's coated in oil, but I don't see really any damage. There's cylinder two, cylinder three. Oh, those are actually coated in oil and fuel. They smell like gasoline. Next, we'll pull our PCV valve off. This engine's very similar to the engine that I have in the Golf R. It has variable valve lift and variable valve timing. Ooh, that was a lot more coolant than I thought there was gonna be. Sploosh. Go ahead and take our engine mount off next. Try and keep these parts all together as best I can. Next, let's take this upper timing cover off. Get our dipstick out first. Ooh. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, the engine oil has been drained out of this, so we can't examine the engine oil at all to see what it looks like. These are our cam adjuster magnets. All right, now we can pull the cover off. Oh yeah. Next, let's take the vacuum pump and high pressure fuel pump off the engine. Yeah, take our pump off. Now we'll take our vacuum pump off. Okay, get this gasket out of the way. Next, we can take off our cylinder head cover, our cam bearing plate, it serves as both. Now, you've probably already noticed that there is a little bit of a window here that's not supposed to be there. Really, at this point, anything cylinder head is gonna have to be replaced because the cover and the cylinder head are line board. But we're still gonna take this out as if it was going back together. Go ahead and pry this cover off. Woo, there we go. Carefully lift this guy off. Here is our little viewing window into our valve train. So here we go. Womp, womp, womp. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Rocker embedded into the cover. Look at that. Dang. That is the result of probably hitting 9,000 RPM. Let's take a little bit closer look at some of this damage. All but cylinder four the rockers on the intake side have come off in one way or another. As we look back here underneath the exhaust cam, this is an intake rocker, this is an intake rocker. Both of those should be over on the intake cam. Let's get our intake manifold off next and see what that looks like. Oh man, that's a lot of oil. Oh, look in the filter housing. It's sparkly. Not as bad as I expected, but there's definitely some glitter on the top of that filter. Let's take a little closer look at our intake ports. Wow, 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 wow. 
the cylinder one and cylinder two are actually submerged. It smells like engine oil and fuel mixed together. Woof. It's just cylinder one and two. Three and four actually look okay. Let's go ahead and take our lower timing cover off next. Well, our timing circuit looks pretty good. No damage here. Let's pull our tensioner off. That way we can take our cylinder head off and inspect our pistons, see if we have any damage up there. All right, next up, we're gonna actually have to take the cams out. So there's a special tool for the spool valves inside our cams for the variable cam timing, and I actually don't have this one. It's a little different than the older one. So we are going to improvise. It's always fun when you get to add a new tool to your list of tools that you need to buy. Plus note, the back of our sprocket looks good. So, pull our timing off. Now, we should be able to lift the cams out. There we go. The issue is, right here, there's a pin that goes into the cylinder head. So that's the thing that was kind of holding us up. But now we get to take this whole thing off as one assembly. And you can see right here, there's a little bit of damage from those rockers coming off. All right, now that we got all that stuff out of the way, let's get a better look at what's going on in this valve train. Missing rocker. I'm assuming this is the one that's embedded in the cover. This rocker and that rocker are gone. One of them's right here. One, oh, where's the other one? This is probably this rocker. This rocker is here. Did one just totally disintegrate? Where did it go? Well, <laughs> oh no, is, that's, is that it? Is it down there? Is it way down there? I don't know. I don't see it. Oh, I found it. Look way down in there. Holy cow. There's the pieces of it. So that one either came from right there or right there. Who knows? Wow, wow, wow. That is some pretty intense damage. Look at the cylinder head right there. Whoa, I've actually seen that before. Dang, look at that. Chunked. <laughs> oh, there's another spot. Chunked. And another spot. Chunked. Woo, doggy. All right, let's get the cylinder head off and see what kind of damage we got underneath. Go ahead and get these bolts out for the cylinder head. Move the rocker out of the way to get that head bolt out. Whoops. Well, that's everybody. Let's go ahead and get the cylinder head on out of here. Get a little bit better look at our bottom end side here. Everything looks pretty good. I don't see any piston to valve contact or anything. Our cylinder bores look okay. All good things. So no damage on the bottom end so far. Let's go ahead and pull the oil pan off next and inspect that. It's raining. Oh geez. That is a lot of oil. I'm not really expecting to see any kind of damage down here, but since we got it here, we might as well take it off and take a look. Everything looks good down here. I don't see any kind of damage or anything like that. Uh, I guess we can just go ahead and put our pan right back on. No sense in leaving it off if we don't see any damage. Well, now that we got the cylinder head on the bench, let's take a little bit closer look and see what the heck is going on in here. So this is what a normal rocker looks like on one of these cars and it just drops right in. We'll also notice that because this has variable valve lift, the roller for the rocker on the exhaust side is considerably different than the one on the intake side. This is the intake one, it's quite a bit wider than on the exhaust side because the exhaust cam has that sleeve that slides back and forth on it. You can actually install these the wrong way, but uh, you end up with a very sad, sad time. Let's see if we can find all the parts. We got one rocker here, 
Here is the little support and the clip. That one goes there. Two more clips right here. Here's another rocker. And then I think we had that one that was stuffed way down in here. Ooh, another clip. And can we get you out of here? Come out, little friend. And da 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 da. There we go. There was the missing one. So we have accounted for, I believe, all of our parts. And of course, we have that one, the first one in cylinder one that is embedded into the cylinder head cover. You can see all the deep scarring and scoring on this cylinder head from these rockers making severe, severe impact. I don't know at what RPM we had complete engine failure, but I'm gonna guess it was pretty high. I've seen over rev faults stored in these engines as high as 9,000 RPM, and uh, that is a quick way to do some very catastrophic damage to an engine like this. Also, we can see the wear on top of the actual valves themselves. This one right here in cylinder two actually looks like it's got a little dome shape on it. And then some of them are just ground at a weird angle, like the one here for cylinder three and the other one for cylinder two. Now, luckily there isn't any bent valves, so we don't really have much to worry about on the bottom end. However, this type of damage, you could probably repair these gouges, deep, deep gouges in the cylinder head. And of course you can put new valves in it probably not going to be worth it for this kind of engine when the cylinder heads really aren't that terribly expensive. They're not cheap. It's not going to be a cheap repair, but they're not terribly expensive either. So usually in this case, replacement of the cylinder head is going to be a far better way to go than trying to attempt to repair this stuff. You're probably thinking, doesn't the ECM have some sort of fail safe for preventing hitting this crazy, what's probably 9,000 RPM point? You would be 100% right. The factory ECM does have protection in it so that you can't accelerate past a certain RPM. What it can account for is being at a high RPM, going into the wrong gear, too low of a gear, dumping the clutch, and the engine just completely over revving. That's how we can get these over rev issues and cause the damage that this engine has. So there we go, the catastrophic results of shifting from third gear to second gear in a high performance driving situation. If you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. Hey, give this video a share. I'm sure some of your friends would love to see this kind of damage. Big thanks to the guys over at Apex Tuning for letting me borrow this engine to disassemble. With that, I'm out. Have an awesome day, guys, and I'll talk to you again next time.